Are you tired of chasing the elusive, organic social media presence that doesn't convert into sales and profit? All that tweeting, all that commenting and posting that results in crickets in your inbox and eventually your bank account. Now, if you're ready to escape the trap of working for money and being your client's slave, strap yourself in because inside this video, you will find some massive wealth, time and leverage shortcuts that are used by some of the most successful coaches, consultants and small businesses that we work with. Now, you are going to be discovering a new model of running your business that is profitable and enjoyable. What's up, coaches, consultants, and business owners? It's Prosper here with Live Long Digital, the number one digital marketing agency for service best business owners like yourself, where we help you build a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, today, I'm going to walk you through five ways to turn advertising into profit in the most predictable and automated fashion without any technical know-how or overwhelm. Now, these five ways um, are going to turn advertising into profit and going to change how you solve your prospects problems so that you don't sell to customers because People like buying stuff, but they don't like to be sold to. Now, before we check out how it works, be sure to smash the subscribe button on the Live Long Digital YouTube channel because you do not want to miss any of our amazing videos that will teach you how to make more money with less struggle. Versions is the name of the game. When you create a customer avatar uh, for your ideal client and then you get them into your sales funnel and you provide them with the kind of information that they want, but if you're not knowing or you don't know the science and art of converting them into customers, you won't be very successful. This is probably the most important step of the online prosperity blueprint because if you know how to convert prospects into paying customers, everything else that you're going to be doing after this is going to be like a piece of cake. So in step two of the online prosperity blueprint, I mentioned that, you know, when you're talking to customers that know, like, and trust you, converting them will become much more easier. And why is this so? Because your potential customers trust you and the information that you're providing them. And all they would then do is reciprocate that by being your customer, because trust is a very important component in the sales and conversion process and people just don't buy from anyone they buy from those that they trust so the first thing that you need to do is to build trust with your prospects and fortunately uh, this takes a bit of time but it can be done and when you provide people with so much value and expect nothing in return guess what they will love you for it but you're probably thinking why should i be um giving away valuable information from shouldn't i be sort of working to sell on them i run a business for crying out loud. You know, when you give people valuable information, they feel like they owe you or they're obligated to return the favor. This is a psychological phenomenon called reciprocity. It's an unconscious human behavior that if you do something nice for somebody, they will feel obligated to do the same for you. Now, with your prospects, if you've given them enough value, what would they do? They will return the favor with their own wallets. So if you're writing blogs, articles, emails, uh, putting out videos and free information like this, guess what your prospects are going to do? They are going to find means and ways to return that favor. And the only way they know how is with their credit card. So naturally, when you are going out and uh, prospecting and looking for customers, there are two concepts that normally uh, come about. One is um, spraying and praying um, with your marketing and hoping that people are going to just jump onto whatever it is that you're selling or carefully taking people through a conversion process and nurturing them so that they become leads and uh, clients that you can, um, you know, rely on that will pay, stay and refer. Now, ever, um, you know, come across the concept of hunting, um, you know, when you are out there shooting, um, you know, animals of prey, when you're hunting, you do not um, sort of 
have any control over what animal or what bird you're going to shoot or whether it's going to come with three legs or four legs or, you know, if it's sick or it's healthy, you just shoot whatever is presented to you or something that comes in contact with your bullet or with your spear. But if you're farming, you not, not naturally look after the seed, you cultivate the soil, you cultivate the land, and then you sow the seeds, and then you weed the grass and make sure that all the plants are growing, um, you know, in a way that you absolutely want. And if there's weeds that are growing about, or if there's, um, you know, unwanted parts of the branches of the, of the plant, you will definitely um, take them away and um, utilize the ones that you want to use. So it's like that when you're in business. Sometimes when you're hunting, you don't really have a say in the kind of clients that you draw in. But if you're farming, you have a choice as to the kind of clientele that you want to work with. And do they actually go uh, according to uh, at that stage? You, know, the you avid- definitely can control You know what happens to your your customers and how they follow through in your sales cycle and everything else. And moving on to the next thing where once you know the people that you're bringing in, you are no longer selling to them. You're actually now starting to solve their problems because people like buying stuff, but they don't like to be sold to. So if you're going to be able to actually um, cultivate the kind of customer that comes through your funnel, then they know that you can solve their problem. And if you can actually articulate what they're going through and how your solutions will be the ones that can solve their problems, then they um, automatically would want to work with you because they have that trust that you will be able to solve whatever each or problem that they might be facing at that particular moment. So now you are no longer hunting, you're farming your leads, you're solving their problems. The next thing that you now have to start doing is a bit of online marketing. Now with this online marketing, we're talking ads, we're talking, um, you know, all the activities that you will be doing in order to turn advertising into profit. So you could do Facebook ads, you could do um, LinkedIn ads, all the kind of um, advertisement that brings people into your funnels so that you will be able to um, work with them and solve their problems. Eventually, you start measuring what's working you keep and what's not working you ditch. Because what doesn't get measured in online marketing is usually um, a waste. So now you're a hunter, you're solving people's problems, you're advertising to them, and you're measuring everything to make sure that the people that you're working with are getting the right results, you eventually create long-term relationships with your customers and they actually prefer to work with you because you have an understanding of who they are and who, um, you know, and what to expect from them. Now, you're probably wondering, which person should I be? Um, Which salesperson is actually better? (laughs) Is it the hunter or is it the farmer? I strongly suggest you become the farmer. You know why? Because the farmer is more uh, focused on nurturing your customer relationships. You're growing people into uh, loyal uh, customers that pay, stay, and refer. Hunters only focus on getting that one-time sale. You know what I mean? That bait and switch. And they go on and look for the other prospect. What happens after that is... We're living in a competitive marketplace where businesses that are not focusing on nurturing their customer relationships are spending a lot more money on their online marketing. And those that are, are eventually successful. You know, they they realize that loyal and repeat customers are their business, um, you know, best asset. So you should be focusing on building long-term um, you know, relationships with your customers and also 
uh, even with your competitors. And furthermore, you should never be selling. You should be so solving people's problems. People hate ads and they use um, ad blocking software just so they cannot be sold to. They hate cold calls. They hate salespeople, especially telemarketers. And most uh, of all, if you don't understand your customer, how can you solve their problem? So what you now need to do is to solve people's problems and not sell to them. The truth is people always have a problem. And if you can convince them with proof of your products and services that you can solve their problem, they'll be glad to buy them. And here's another secret of selling without selling. If you show people that you really care about them and you want to help them solve their problem, then you know what? They feel like they're not being solved. So you want to identify their needs. You want to work with them, enhance the, and the understanding of the value of what it is that you're offering rather than attend, uh, you you know, and attempts to influence them to make a purchase. You know, there's a difference between persuasion and manipulation. It is totally possible to manipulate people to do things that they don't want, you know, maybe to buy your products or your services, but they'll hate you for doing it. And once, you know, they smell manipulation, guess what they're going to do? They're going to write a very bad testimonial. So take your time and don't rush to selling people. Work on developing your relationships with your prospects and your customers. And don't try to um, take your customer from, hey, let's do this too. Yep, let's get into bed or let's get married. You need to bridge that gap with trust and don't be afraid to ask for the sale once you've provided value. And for you to do this, you need to be putting out calls to action. Um, you know, that will then help people make decisions or make an immediate response to what you're offering. And you'll be surprised that a lot of people um, out there fail to put out compelling calls to action because they haven't given enough value uh, for people to buy from them. Now, here's a list of compelling calls to action that you can use. You can use buy now, add to cart, download now, sign up for free, get free access, um, keep me informed, check it out, learn more, order now, apply now, or get your ebook like you just done now, you know, or click here to purchase. So there's a lot of uh, calls to action that you can use and it depends on what it is that you're offering. And you should always be testing and optimizing this CTAs and in your sales funnel. And moreover, there's a whole science of converting prospects into paying customers. And it's usually uh, referred to as the conversion rate optimization. So you can ask me when we start working together, what CRO is. It is a method of increasing conversions on your website websites or your landing pages, just to make sure that uh, when people come to your website, they definitely uh, come through. And for this, you can use a lead magnet, like the ebook that you just uh, downloaded. And you can also improve the copy that's on your website. And when you're speaking to people, use words like you a, a whole lot. That way people feel like the marketing is targeted at, at them. And you want to ask you know, your current customers, what made them purchase? What made them buy from you? All of those things will help you um, make sure that people understand who you are, what you sell, and how you can actually solve their problems. And once you get reviews and testimonials, make sure you are utilizing them because people like us do things like this. Your current customers will help you convert, um, you know, your prospects into paying customers. And this makes it a whole lot easy. But as a general note, you should always be testing optimizing, trying out new tactics. And while you're measuring and tracking all those results, be sure to be offering value every step of the way, because we do get paid in direct proportion to the value that we bring to the marketplace. So there you have it. All right. Now, you know, you don't need to be a hunter, but you need to nurture your leads every step of the way so that you can increase awareness 
of what it is that you're selling to your customers. And when they eventually come to the end of your funnel, then they already know, like, and trust you. And eventually they will be able to buy from you. And pretty much you now know that you need to be solving your customers' problems and not trying to sell to them. Because like I said earlier, people buy from those that they know, like, and trust. And people like buying stuff but they don't like to be sold to. And once all that is in place, you've got your online marketing, um, you, you can uh, reach out to us and then we can show you methods of turning that advertising into profit. And once everything else is placed, we're tracking and measuring what's working, what's working we keep and what's not working we ditch. And all throughout your uh, content, we will be putting out calls to action that convert prospects into paying customers. Now, if you're ready to create a predictable, scalable marketing system that generates an abundance of leads and nurtures them effectively into an automated manner, I urge you to click the button below so you can schedule a call with me. I will see you in the next email.